Hello, and welcome to Control All Tune, a place we like to wrinkle our brains and update the mental software. You know, learn stuff. Today, we are going to be learning about our brains on sex. We're going to be learning what's happening in the gray matter while we're, you know, mid coitus. For this video, we're going to talk about five stages. Now, I define the first stage as courtship. The courtship stage is when you're talking to somebody, getting to know somebody, deciding whether or not you want to have sex with somebody. The next four were actually coined by Dr. William Masters and Miss Virginia Johnson. Now, they launched a body of research that has been duplicated and done again and is widely talked about regarding physiology of the body, what's happening in the body during sex. And they define four stages as excitement, plateau, orgasm, and resolution. And that will give us our five stages of sexual response in the brain, the sexiest organ we've got, so let's dive in. Courtship. Courtship's when you're talking to somebody, deciding whether or not you want to have sex with them, deciding whether or not you like them as a person. What's going on here is happening in the frontal lobe. The frontal lobe is responsible for all of your rational thought, all of your decision making, all of your executive function. Your orbital frontal cortex, orbital frontal cortex, which is a fancy way of saying the lower part of your frontal lobe is not just responsible for differentiating between attractive stimulus and not attractive stimulus, i.e. between Alexander Skarsgård and, well, not attractive stimulus, but also differentiating between stimulus that is objectively attractive, somebody who is generally good looking, or generally kind, or generally attractive by societal standards, and somebody who is attractive to you. Somebody is your type and has the qualities that you find attractive, physically, personality, emotionally, all of it. All happens in the orbital frontal cortex. Now this whole area is highly communicative with your hippocampus. Your hippocampus is part of your emotional limbic system. Your hippocampus is responsible for your short-term and long-term memory storage, but also memory retrieval, which is important when you're deciding whether or not to play hide the bishop. Two other friends who are vast at help here, and I'll talk a little bit more about them later, are the thalamus and the midbrain. The thalamus and the midbrain are responsible for, I'll talk a little bit later, but responsible for processing a lot of your audio and visual information, and that information will be interpreted by your temporal lobe. Your temporal lobe is located on either side of your brain. Again, we hope you're talking at this point. Moving forward, we get into excitement. Now, excitement, we've decided that the horizontal mambo is a go. Excitement is defined as when stimulation begins, the touching, the petting, the nibbling. What's going on here is we've got your amygdala. Now, your amygdala are two little almond-like structures that are located deep in your temporal lobes. Their job is to communicate between your brain and your body. Now, the way they do this is the amygdala communicates between your brain and your hypothalamus. Your hypothalamus communicates between your brain, through the amygdala, and through your nervous system and endocrine system. It does this by communicating directly with your nervous system and through the pituitary gland with your endocrine system. Your endocrine system is responsible for your hormone output in your body, basically how do you feel about things. Your nervous system, partially, how do you physically feel things. Your brain, well, your brain. The two guys that I mentioned earlier, your midbrain and your thalamus. Your thalamus is responsible for processing your sense of smell and your sense of taste. Smelling and tasting the beautiful David Bowie creature in front of you. Your midbrain is responsible for processing your audio and visual information as interpreted by your temporal lobes. And all of these are working and going and deciding that hide the bishop is a go. Then we get into plateau. Plateau. Penetration has happened. We are having sex. The uglies are a bumpin' and a grindin'. Two hormones that have been present, are, but are strongest at this point and getting stronger, are testosterone and estrogen. Now, testosterone is present in males, estrogen in females. Both are responsible for our drive to copulate, our drive to tackle the gazelle. And both of them are getting stronger and pumping and flowing, you know, about as fast as Anakin on race day. Additionally, we've got serotonin coming. Now, serotonin is our happy hormone. It's just kind of enjoying the party, it's there, it's happy, we're having sex, we're having a party, it's great. We're pumping and grinding and these chemicals are just getting stronger and stronger until the champagne supernova chemical shift change occurs. Orgasm. 
orgasm. Testosterone and estrogen at this point are spent. They are night night for the night and oxytocin and vesipressin explode. They take over. Now oxytocin is known as our love hormone. It's responsible for a lot of our pair bonding, a lot of our feelings of connectedness with other people, platonically, maternally, romantically, all of it. Off topic, it's actually very present in childbirth when, you know, mother, son, daughter, pair bonding. It's, just, it's there in all sorts of relationships. It's our feelings of connectedness to other people. Vasopressin serves a very similar function in males. It's responsible for a lot of males' monogamous behavior, also drowsiness. It happens. And after orgasm, these are the hormones that take over the shift, and we are feeling relaxed and happy because serotonin still is chilling and being party. We've got our hypothalamus, which is bringing our body back down to normalcy. It's talking to our nervous system, telling the parasympathetic guys to bring us back down, Scotty, bring us back to our normal homeo-happy state. Our body is returning to normalcy, and life is good. Life is great. We have just successfully had sex. This is control all human, and we've just talked about what goes on in the brain and the body, but mostly the brain, during sex. We've talked about the five stages, courtship, excitement, plateau, orgasm, and that last one we talked about was resolution, but we were just feeling so relaxed. I hope this has been educational, and I hope it's been interesting. If there's anything that maybe you still want to know about what's going on in the brain during that time, feel free to leave a comment down below. If maybe there's something that's going on that I didn't cover, or something else off topic that it made you think of, or a question that you have, please do leave it below. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Stay kind, my friends. Also, I'll be in my book. <laughs>